Hello everyone, I'm Silvia Gervasoni, I'm a postdoc at the University of Cagliari. I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me here for this presentation. Today I'm going to talk my, about my research activity uh, focusing on uh, antimicrobial resistance, in particular uh, on the optimization of uh, efflux avoidance and inhibition for antibiotic development. The World Health Organization warned years ago about the risk of uh, antimicrobial resistance. Um, and in the meantime, the problem has become more and more urgent as the spread of uh, drug resistance pathogens threats our ability to treat common infection. Um, anti antibiotics are becoming uh, increasingly ineffective. Here I reported a map showing the distribution of a carbapenem resistance bacterium all that spreads all around the world. So new antimicrobials are urgently needed. Uh, therefore, several calls for a research projects have been opened both in the US and in Europe. And um, the work that I'm going to show you here belongs to one of these uh, bigger uh, projects. So, um, resistance occurs uh, naturally over time through genetic changes. Bacteria exploit different mechanisms to defend themselves towards the action of antibiotics. For instance, they can inactivate the drug, like in the case of beta-lactamases, which are able to hydrolyze the beta-lactam ring of some antibiotic classes. Or they can export outside the cell the drug using the efflux pumps. These, in particular, are a major player in resistance uh, in gram-negative bacteria, which combine the efflux to the poor permeability of their outer membrane that uh, makes it difficult for antibiotics to enter the cell. So, how can we overcome resistance? Well, we have uh, two main strategies. The first one is to design new drugs able to avoid the resistance mechanisms. So, for instance, we want antibiotics that do not bind the efflux pumps and therefore they are not uh, um, transported outside the cell. The second strategy is uh, to co-administrate inhibitors um, to, with uh, the drugs to enhance their activity. So, following the previous uh, example, we want uh, compounds that bind the efflux pump, blocking uh, their activity. Um, today, I'm going to show you how we address this issue by using computational techniques. We started with a ligand-based approach where we collected a database of, uh, of antimicrobials that uh, are used for both correlation studies or machine learning analysis. Then we increase the complexity of the system uh, by using a structure-based approach applied for the discovery of new antibiotics and uh, inhibitors. So, starting with uh, the first. When uh, we think about uh, uh, databases of uh, small molecule, we can think of uh, PubChem, Campbell, so a uh, database that contains the 2D or 3D structure of uh, these small molecules with uh, some of uh, their uh, basic chemical physical properties. So what we wanted to do was to collect uh, a curated uh, database of uh, chemical physical properties and force field parameters dedicated to antimicrobials. Therefore, we created a BDB which contains more than 300 antimicrobials belonging to 25 different classes, including both traditional antibiotics and also inhibitors. Um, for each uh, structure, we, for each uh, uh, compound, we downloaded the structure from uh, PubChem. We, perf we checked uh, the protonation and the tautomeric states. We performed a DFT-based uh, geometry optimization followed by a single point. Then uh, the QM results uh, were used for the force field generation 
And finally, we perform a one microsecond MD simulation on all of these compounds. So, from this pipeline, we obtain the QM optimized structure for each compound and also some um, structural cluster extracted from the MD simulation. From each of these steps, we also extracted molecular descriptors, both standard and non-standard, so QM and MD derived. ABDB is freely available on Fixture at this link, where we share all the input and output file that the user can download and reuse. All of these descriptors can be applied for correlation and machine learning studies um, in order to explore uh, different aspects like the permeation or uh, to perform some prediction activity. Um, in uh, this second case study, I'm going to focus on uh, the efflux, and um, in particular uh, we focused on this uh, gram-negative bacterium called Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Um, the transporter MEX A, B, O, P, R, M is uh, the major one of Pseudomonas aeruginosa. It is a tripartite uh, antiporter system, drug uh, proton antiporter system, which extends from the inner to the outer membrane. It exploits uh, the energy associated to the transport of proton to expel out of the cell various ligand classes. Uh, the engine of this complex system is uh, represented by the homotrimeric inner membrane transporter MEXB which belongs to the resistance nodulation division superfamily. MEXB mediates the transport of substrate uh, um, fans to, through a conformational cycling of uh, its monomer, which is called the functional rotation mechanism. These monomers can uh, adopt uh, um, three different conformations, loose, tight and open, LTO. So, in the functional rotation mechanism, the substrate binds the L monomer. Uh, this binding is followed by a conversion into the T conformation, and finally, the substrate are expelled after the uh, conversion of the T into the O monomer. Two main uh, binding pockets uh, were identified uh, into MEXB an access pocket in the L monomer and a distal pocket in the T monomer. The former um, is uh, one of the entry channels for high molecular weight compounds, while the second one is thought to be visited by all the compounds expelled by the transporter. While for MEXB just few crystal structures are available, for its homologous in uh, Escherichia coli, namely ACRB, we have several uh, um, experimental structures, also in complex with uh, various ligand classes. Um, so from this structure, uh, it is believed that the substrate um, can uh, oscillate between uh, different isoenergetic iso binding modes inside this wide and promiscuous uh, binding pocket, which is uh, the oscillation hypothesis. So, in this uh, case study, we focus on the design of new antibiotics able to avoid the binding of uh, MEXB. Um, it is well known that uh, the fluoroquinolone antibiotic class uh, is uh, a substrate of uh, MEXB. However, not all of these compounds uh, are, um, have the same efficacy toward Pseudomonas aeruginosa, uh, suggesting differences in affinity and binding modes. By knowing uh, how these compounds bind the MEXB, we can uh, rationally design new antibiotics able to uh, avoid uh, the binding with the transporter. Uh, recently, a co-crystal structure of ACRB in complex with uh, one of these fluoroquinolones, which is a, a um, levofloxacin, has been uh, published. And uh, the, um, we used this structure as a reference. In this work, we performed a systematic docking campaigns on 36 fluoroquinolones 
Here, for time reason, I'm going to focus just on the results of levofloxacin. Uh, so this is the workflow that we used. So we um, exploited the ensemble docking. So we collected the multiple conformation of MEXB and also of the, lig the ligands. These conformations were retrieved from a BDB that I showed you at the beginning. Uh, then, in order to increase uh, the statistics, uh, we use uh, three different docking protocols, uh, generating uh, 1,800 poses per ligand. Then we uh, cluster the docking poses, uh, and the representative of uh, each docking poses uh, underwent to an energy optimization, a scoring, and a surface analysis. Uh, but before we validate our workflow on uh, the ACRB levofloxacin complex for which we have the experimental structure. So here on the right I reported the clusters derived from the docking poses, the corresponding population and also the RMSD with respect to the crystal structure. So as you can see, the, uh, the most populated cluster were able, was able to reproduce uh, the um, experimental structure with uh, an RMSD of uh, 1.3 Armstrong. Uh, below, I reported the residue of the distal pocket, and I colored in red those residues that were in contact with the level fluxacin in the crystal structure. In ensemble docking, we have a statistics of contact derived from all the docking poses. Therefore, the heat map that you can see here reports the percentage of contacts of the docking poses. And uh, you can see that the docking was able to find the same contacts of the experimental structures, but also it found other contacts suggesting uh, that different binding modes inside the pocket are possible. Then we, of course, applied our uh, workflow to MaxB, so docking, uh, clustering, and optimization. Um, here, again, I reported the cluster and their population. So the most populated cluster is the one in green, was uh, placed in the same region of levofloxacin in the, the crystal structure. But uh, as before, also here, we found alternative binding modes, like the one in magenta, in the deeper portion of the pocket, and the one in yellow, in the middle of the pocket. So these results suggest that uh, levofloxacin preferentially bind in the uh, same region of uh, levofloxacin found in the uh, X-ray structure. However, different uh, um, binding modes are possible throughout the pocket, which is in agreement with the oscillation hypothesis. Um, given the lack of uh, experimental structure between uh, of uh, MaxB in complex with uh, quinolones, we made available at this web page all uh, the 36 complexes uh, that we obtained with docking that user can visualize and download. Ensemble docking um, takes into account indirectly the flexibility of both the protein and the ligands. However, it lacks a description of the of evolution of the system over time, which is something that we can uh, analyze with uh, MD simulation. Um, so in this uh, last case study, uh, we use uh, MD simulation to study the behavior of uh, inhibitors. Um, this is a work in progress, but uh, I would like to share with you our preliminary results. So, um, as I mentioned, here we are focused on inhibition, in particular on competitive inhibition. So, um, compounds that bind the flux pump without being transported, preventing, uh, in turn, the binding of uh, antibiotics. Um, we have uh, one crystal structure of MEXB in complex with an inhibitor called ABPP, which was found in the distal pocket, partially interacting with an hydrophobic region rich in phenylalanine residues called hydrophobic trap. 
Here we um, worked on these uh, Rampex compounds, which are peptidomimetics, and uh, experimental data uh, shows that uh, although they have a similar structure, they can be divided into different classes. Some of these compounds are substrate of MEXB, while others are competitive inhibitors. Previous studies uh, tried to find some predictive rules able to distinguish between these different classes. And uh, this work is uh, a following a follow-up of the previous uh, findings where we try to answer this question, can substrate be converted into inhibitors? To this aim, we uh, use ensemble docking, multi-copy MD simulations and free energy calculations. So here are the docking poses of the substrate and the inhibitors. And uh, as you can see, the aromatic ring of uh, the compounds points towards the hydrophobic trap. But in the uh, inhibitors, differently from the substrate, the interaction in, uh, is uh, more tightly and uh, it uh, established some pi pi stacking interaction with the phenylalanine, which is something that we saw also in ABPP, in the other inhibitor that I showed you before. Then these poses underwent to multi-copy MD simulations and uh, we found that the substrate explored the binding pocket more than the inhibitor, which is something that we can see from the RMSD values. Uh, while here below I reported the percentage contribution of the residues to the binding uh, free energy. We can see that the inhibitors interact with a few residues to a greater extent compared to the substrate, which conversely interact with more residues, but to a less extent. So um, these results together are again in agreement with the oscillation hypothesis, so where the substrate seems to uh, explore the pocket and uh, uh, adopt different binding mode with similar uh, binding energy. Why we speculate that the inhibitor binds more tightly to the hydrophobic trap. So these are preliminary results. We are now performing some mutational analysis on these key residues uh, to confirm the, uh, these um, computational results. And uh, we are also performing other MD simulations in order to increase the statistics. And also we are thinking about uh, using uh, different methods for the free energy calculation. So in conclusion, I, want to, I wanted to show you uh, different uh, techniques, computational techniques, uh, to handle, to address uh, antimicrobial resistance, which is a complex uh, problem and uh, it is also multifactorial. So I believe that it's important to use uh, um, different techniques uh, and to um, tackle this issue from different sides. Uh, I just like to, I just want to thank my research group, our collaborators, and of course all of you for your kind attention, and I will be happy to answer uh, your question.